Yeah, so uh, this hopefully will be less controversial than uh, certain comments made in the previous talk, so um, this should, we should get this really quickly. So this is um, basically finally taming the last bits of magic link issues that we had from the container runtime side of things. Um, and this was something which I worked on in the original OpenAT2 um, proposal a while ago, but um, it got, oh, yeah. Uh, but it got removed, because, well, I removed it because there were a couple of semantic issues that were not clear, and so I just was hoping that uh, we could have a very short discussion about which stuff is missing. Like, basically, does it make sense to everyone? Is everyone happy with it? Am I going to get things thrown at me when I post this on the list? Um, and yeah, that's basically it. So um, effectively, the current status of like all of the work that I was doing for making uh, file system stuff less, well, at least VFS stuff less awful for containers, OpenAT2 is merged, libpathRS, which is like a whole separate thing we could talk about some other time is basically uh, a way to safely do path operations on containers. That's still something I'm working on. Um, and then this part is just the magic link hardening part of things. So uh, why do we want, so first of all, okay, I guess I didn't put a slide for this, but what is a magic link? A magic link is anything that uses ND jump link uh, in the VFS. So it's basically a thing that looks like a symlink, but it's not a symlink. Um, and we have in OpenAT2, you can block resolving these things so you can't be tricked into opening one by accident. Um, but uh, the hardening stuff we're talking about here is basically um, as an attacker, and we have had CVs, several CVs in container runtime specifically about this issue, which is that um, because, because once you have a handle to the underlying file, so okay, because magic links lets you get access to the underlying file, if you have a container manager that is joining a container, there is a window in which, depending on what kind of privileges you set up, what kind of permissions the container process has, and many other things, um, you can grab a handle to, for instance, proc pid exe of the container manager, you have a handle to this file. Now, obviously, you can't open it for writing at the time because, by definition, it's a live MMO for process. It can't be open for writing. You get etext busy. But if I have a handle to this thing, I can then wait for it to die, and then I would reopen it for writing. You might ask, why, would, why on earth would a container process have the rights to open a file on the host as root? Um, well, because that's how like Kubernetes and like every other major, well, the, like major, obviously some people don't do this because they realize this is a bad idea, but uh, like most stuff that runs on containers, people are not using user namespaces, they're not protecting things the way they should be doing. Um, but there are other things where like you could imagine a setup where I have copied, the, like I have downloaded the code necessary to run my own containers on my machine and I run this thing, it, it would be very strange for a, container to, for a container to overwrite stuff that's on the host. So anyway, being able to fix this properly would be nice, because the moment run C and LXC and uh, C run and pick your container on time, uh, they all do a variety of awful things to make this attack go away. Uh, the one that we do in run C is, and, and LXC and I think basically everyone else is that we make a copy of the entire binary for every single container. When you start a container, the first step is, okay, I now open proc self XE, I create a MFD, I copy the contents of the MFD, I seal the MFD, and then I exec VE that MF MFD, because then I'm absolutely sure that even if you can overwrite the damn thing, it won't affect other containers on the system. Uh, there are several caveats about certain things. Anyway, it's, I'm sure we all agree that is all absolutely awful and should not exist, um, but unfortunately it's necessary because we can't defend it against the other way. So this is, I want to solve this problem, and in addition, being able to restrict the reopening of files, effectively like a capability style setup, I think makes sense in general. So I think that both of these things we can solve with this one thing. So basically, there is a patch set which I posted a while ago. I, it's on my, it's on my, um, my, I have on my Linux tree. You have that it exists. But basically, what it does is that it, the design is that, uh, and I'll explain what this means exactly in a second. But basically, when you try to reopen a magic link, so you try to open um, proc self fd blah, it will not allow you to reopen it if the mode you requested is not a subset of the mode of the magic link itself. And uh, then it also adds something that, is, that has been, uh, would be great if we had, um, which is OMD path, which basically lets you do exactly the same thing, but without having to go through ProcFS, you just have the file and you say, please, please reopen this for me. Um, and then uh, it also adds a um, um, way to mask this. So with openat 2 you can set a new thing in the open house struct. You can set the mask reopening. So you can say, open this file, but do not allow it to be reopened for rewriting, open for writing through through the regular, um, yeah, through through reopening, and then uh, all this information is exposed in FD info um, as like an extra field. Um, so what exactly does it mean to say that you cannot? You need to be a subset. So what this means is that for a if you do an O path of a regular file, you can reopen it any way you like, unless you have a, a, a mask set. So this is all without a mask set. So like just regular open 
just regular open of it with OPath, you get you can reopen it with anything, um, which is the way it works now. Then with OPath of a magic link, you copy the mode of the magic link. So if the magic link does not have the right bit set in like the, sorry, because magic links, uh, unlike regular symlinks, they have uh, magic <laughs> modes. And the mode actually has like, you could, like if you have an open file for reading, for reading only, the mode has only the read bit set. It doesn't have the write bit for set, for instance, um, with caveats. But this is the, the, the general way it works. So um, when you do an OPath, the OPath will copy the mode. So that means if you have a if you have an O path of the ex of proc self exe of the con of proc blah exe of the container, if you O path it, you get the same restrictions. So the restrictions get copied with O path, and if you open it with any other regular mode, it, it's just the obvious like if it's read, it's read, it's read, right, right. Uh, and then all this is based so reopens are based on the magic link mode, which is based on the F mode. So the magic link mode is based on the F mode, um, and when you do with the uh, O empty path, it just uses the F mode. Um, so yeah, so that's the current patch. So basically, the questions are, um, and we can go through. We'll go through each one. And I, I, have, I have slides for each one, but if you would like to scream at me now, please do. Um, uh, basically, uh, the first question is whether or not those make sense. So um, Andy suggested this this semantics when we were talking about it some time ago, um, and I like any concept. I think there are some slightly hairy issues we can get into where it's not quite clear exactly how things should work. But um, it does at least protect against this one thing. Um, the, the questions of magic link semantics, so because part of these changes will change the way that certain restrictions work and will change part of your API, one of the things that I would like is that if we can just narrow down <laughs> exactly how we would future proof this against for certain future things. Like for instance, if we wanted to make it that you could that you could have a file descriptor that you couldn't exec. So like I open this file and you can only read it. You cannot f exec it, for instance. Um, or if you wanted to do this, you can't do this today. But if you wanted to do it, uh, if you want to add this feature in the future, it would be a good idea to at least plan out so that this stuff doesn't need to change once we add that feature, for instance. Um, but yeah, so basically directories, this is like the, quite boring, but basically. Um, there is no way to detect when you have like a, a file p, like from the f mode, you cannot detect that it's a directory. So you would need to have like another way of, of detecting this um, and so on and so on. Uh, yeah, but we, but we want to have, for the future proofing aspect of this, we would want it to have like RWX all set because at the moment directories are not restricted by this patch. So effectively, um, I guess, yeah. So should, it, should there be like an <laughs> f mode is a directory bit that is only cosmetic at the moment, um, yeah. Should we even use the F mode bit? Like, is there another way we should be doing it? Um, and also, reader is currently not because the current way this works is because of the way that with the way the magic links work is that they're all like, uh, well, they're, they're magic as in the name um, because it's all being piped through ND jump link and everything else. You're in a situation where um, it like every, every single if you want to make more restrictions that apply to this stuff, you need to like rework the way that lookup works such that it like you save this information during ND jump link and then during the part of lookup, you then like handle this, which means that for every single like if you wanted to change the way that if you wanted to restrict resolution through these things, which this which this patch doesn't do, if you wanted to restrict re resolution such that like, oh, I create this handle to this directory, but you cannot read it or you cannot go underneath it. Um, you would need to add like a bunch of other restrictions to a bunch of other places. So I guess I didn't add this because it wasn't clear. Uh, I mean, it, it is, to me it's obvious that it's something which would not be a bad thing to have, but it's not clear whether people would be happy with like having like this littered all over the place and so on and so on. Um, and yeah, so that's, yes. Uh, is there another mic? You can grab mine if you want. Does it make sense to add a system call specifically for reopening a file? Does that make doing the security stuff easier? And then you just oh plan dear. reopening prop magic sim links. But the problem is that we use it, like people use it. So you can't you can't ban it. And it, it's not like people use it in like nefarious way. Like in container on times we, we we don't just use this, we like abuse this to hell and back because like we because we need it, because there, there are certain security properties you cannot get without using it. So having it as like an official kernel thing is great. One of the reasons why it's tied to this patch set is because you cannot add this feature until you fix these holes with how reopening works, right? And I, so I should point out, obviously DAC rules apply, like if, if, you, if you could not normally open the file, you can't, yeah, that's fine. The problem is, is that this stuff like totally bypasses namespaces and you cannot, like there is, no, there is no way of restricting it because like this is like kernel API, like the kernel facing, uh, the user facing API. Doesn't schmod work? Of Shouldn't what? schmod work? Change. Uh, 
Mode of symlinks doesn't matter. Mode beats on symlinks are completely ignored. Yeah, but could they matter for magic symlinks? I mean, this is what this what this does. But yeah, it, the, could right. it be done with Shmod? Uh, should it? I mean, I don't think it's feasible. Okay. Uh, one thing to keep in mind. Uh, magic symlinks are not all that magic because every time your script uh, mentions, say, slash dev slash in, that actually resolves to proc self fd zero. So uh, it's not like we could freely change uh, behavior of that stuff without breaking the living hell out of uh, unknown amount of uh, odd scripts on uh, hell knows how many systems it's uh, it, it's really not that an exotic feature we, we need yeah we really need this to be backwards compatible because we for example we do crazy stuff where we open slash def slash pts slash no def ptmx as an opath file descriptor because it doesn't yes. trigger an open on the actual ptmx device stash that file descriptor uh, and then later on use it to retrieve the actual slave side of that PTY device and that needs to continue to work so it, this whole thing needs to be implemented in a backward compatible way. The thing is though why I think we want to have this is people keep coming to us with uh, hacks to, fi to fix the well, hacks, but patches to fix the uh, uh, proc self exe hell. The recent attempt, for example, was to somehow restrict this. But this would be our way out if we had this properly uh, properly done. Then all this problem goes away because then you couldn't be able to write to this uh, proc self exe file anymore, provided the container engine opened it correctly. Um. What happens uh, if uh, somebody tries to bind proc self exe, uh, well, with following links on, uh, on the source, and uh, then uses whatever path name it's bound to, to open it for write? Yeah, Where do you problem. stash that information? Yeah, that is a problem. Uh, I mean, so the the thing is that we so uh, speaking. Uh, okay, th there are two. The first thing is that that is something we should also figure out a way to deal with. But the thing, but the the practical upshot is that for most containers where we're dealing with untrusted code and everything, they can't do mounts like that. So you so you wouldn't be able to do the mount. Now it would be obviously it would be we would want to also fix that. Um, but yeah, but at the moment the problem is that you can do this reopening stuff. There's no like, again, there is there is like a DAC permission check. But again, we're talking like. 99.999% of containers that are running in the entire planet are running as a root with no username spaces. So like there is no, like you're not, DAC permissions are like, yeah, yeah, they're not enough. But yeah, I, I agree that that is, a, that is a separate problem that yeah, I, I would need to sit down and think about how we would deal with that. Because I agree that is, um, that is something, yeah, which we'd also need to block. The whole uh, proc self exe attack vector is really just an attack vector be because they don't uh, use user namespaces. They're not, I mean, always not the solution to uh, to uh, to everything, but they do block the proc self um, exe attack. Uh, whereas if you just have a container with a bunch of namespaces, that is an, uh, a valid uh, uh, attack vector. I mean, you could just use garbage because it's a good environment. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, yeah. <laughs> There are situations where even with these namespaces, you would be you would be vulnerable. But like, uh, how practical they are is like a different topic. But like, for instance, if like uh, going back to when I first started working on rootless containers a long time ago for RunC or whatever, you would the use case was like I have no access at all. Like this was like I've been given a machine by a university supervisor who hates me and doesn't want to give me any packages at all. I download all the stuff by myself and then I run I I so the RunC binary is owned by me and then I start a user namespace where I am root because there is a, I can only map one user and then in that case you could overwrite it. Now, how useful that use case is like a different topic. But the point is that like there are use cases, even with user spaces, where, that, where that's also a problem. Yeah. This was part of the original, uh, this was part of the original open ad two patch set. Thanks for working on this, by the way. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I find this to be extremely uh, 
useful if we could make this work because I think it's pretty, it, it makes uh, the OPATH, OPATH file descriptors a lot more useful uh, as well. Um, you get a lot more um, guarantees uh, for them, uh, from them. And uh, that, that is also, by the way, the reason, uh, even though this is going in a, is related to that, but that is one of the reasons why I tried to prevent uh, being able to use OPATH file descriptors in ever more system calls. The recent patch that was, for example, where someone wanted to use an OPATH file descriptor in the SEDEX adder uh, system call. And uh, I really don't like it because it makes OPATH as a concept uh, way less useful by giving it ever more capabilities. Um, it should be with no way of, of limiting it. Uh, like if we have a way of meaningfully li uh, limiting it, then this is a different story, but uh, this would be, uh, I think this would be a great addition. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, so th basically I guess the thing that the talk is basically, so at the moment it solves this one issue, which is the proc self XE issue. Like that issue is solved with the patch set. Um, the only question is that it seems to me that effectively it would make more sense if we like actually just had this, so effectively right now, because because symlinks, uh, because the permission modes don't matter and because magic links act like symlinks in many ways, you end up with a situation where like, oh, like there is no check when we are going through a symlink of like, do, like does the mode make sense? Even even if we're using it as a directory, it, there's no check of that because it's a symlink or it's a, it's, it's a magic link. I, and then ND jump link means that it's like even, it's more magical. But the point is, is that when I say magic, I mean like, it's not like within the realm of regular like, Oh, a symlink is just you replace that part with the contents of the symlink. That's what I mean by magic link. But anyway, so um, effectively, it seems to me that yeah, like the the most logical, the nicest thing would be is if we had the mode of the of a magic link to a directory, for instance, uh, acted the same as if it was an actual directory. So like, if you were to have, if it had no read bit, you could not read it, for instance. And if you had no exec bit, you could not resolve through it, for instance. And this would then be all be stuff that you can that you can deny using uh, OpenAT. So that means that you could use OpenAT. Uh, now there are there are things to consider with regards to if we were to do this with directories. The reason why it's not done in the patch set is because it becomes way more complicated because you have to think about well, okay, that means that every single at sys call then has to reject it because uh, technically if you do an open underneath it, you need to then block that because it doesn't have read permissions or exec permissions or whatever. So it gets more complicated, which is why it's not in the current patch set. Sorry, word count. I apologize. Um, I speak too fast. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, oh, watch it back at uh, half speed. Um, yeah, but no, sorry. Uh, the short version is that, um, yeah, so I think that, and then uh, the other thing is the exec bit, for instance. So at the moment, uh, you cannot, so there is no way to open a file. Sorry, there's no way to have a file handle that a process cannot f exec, okay? Because there is no restriction. Again, I, I obviously, if, it's, if, it's, if it has the exec bit set on the actual file. But the point is that like, if you have this handle to let's say, I don't know, a set UID binary or something, and you want to hand this handle to someone else, and you don't trust them, they could exec it if they wanted to. Now obviously you would hope that a set UID binary wouldn't have bugs or whatever, but the, the point is is that you can, there's no way to restrict that. You cannot restrict resolution through directories as like on a, on a file handle basis. And I'm not suggesting that we, well, okay, I'm saying, should we implement now, question mark, but like even if we don't implement it now, um, I guess basically I think the design of this should also be able to have this in mind. So if we were to add this in the future, at least you wouldn't have to rethink the way that the magic link changes would work. Well, uh, uh, right now, uh, write bits on directories themselves uh, have nothing to do with uh, opening files in them for write. Um, yeah. What you are suggesting to change, uh, well. Uh, no, no, so what I'm suggesting is that if we had, um, okay, so if we have, excuse me, uh, with the exact bits, so what I'm suggesting with directories is, is that basically if I have a, an O path to a directory and I've set it such that it does not have a write bit in proc self FD blah, then I cannot MKDIR using that thing. So I cannot, MKDIR at would fail, is what, or, or, or whatever. OCREAT mm. under that thing will fail, is what, is what I'm saying. Semantically, that- In the would, thing or under the thing? Uh, well, it's a directory, so under the thing. So like you have, I, ha I open slash foo, uh, open slash opt with, with no write bit. 
using using it was it's opath, but I, I I set the mask such oh. that you cannot write to it, and then I then try and then I then try to mkdr at that file descriptor something that would fail is is not what the patch does. I'm saying to me that semantic makes sense, but I don't know if it's something which if we should pursue it, if it is something that is too complicated to do everywhere, I don't know. That's why I'm that's why I'm bringing it up. Mm. I mean, I want. I mean, <laughs> Al sighing while I was saying that gives me an impression that it's probably uh, <laughs> painful. It sounds fairly straightforward. Basically, you're putting an ACL in the struct file that anything that wants to do something with that struct file has to obey. So you can say you're, this struct file, if you're using it as a base for McDirect, can't do writes, can't do lookups, or can't do reads. And then if you reopen that, you can't give the reopen file any more than any more permissions than the source file. Yeah, so that's what that's what does the. Yeah. Yeah, it's a capability-based system. I mean, mm -hmm. ultimately, and the thing is, that, so it's like the on the file itself, the patch that already does that. That's what that's what it does. The question is like, okay, I now want to say, I now want to resolve through it. So let's say I want to go underneath it. At the moment, because it's the rest of the logic for magic links, basically the only thing it touches is it touches the last part of a lookup for 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 stuff. So that that part is is checked. But like when you walk through it, or when you have like an at thing that is, that is on it and stuff like that. Those things are not blocked, mainly because I wasn't sure whether people would be happy with like changing all of that. Because we we need the exe stuff to not be broken, and the current patch that does that. But like all the other stuff, it seems to me would be a good idea. But I don't know if this will be unpalatable. Well, I don't or... think so. so basically... I don't think so. We don't have anything of that sort in directories, and that's uh, how uh, the system had been well since ever, since probably 69 or so. Uh, and trying right. to um, change that. Um, uh, yeah, it would be opt-in. I mean, you, you would have to create a opath of this thing that has this mask. Like, it would be like, if you create a regular opath, same as always, but if I open to a directory and I want to say, okay, I want to give this directory to another process, but I don't want them to be able to make files underneath it or something, even if they regularize okay, the Okay, uh, what happens when you bind that thing somewhere else? Now you have a directory. Uh, yeah, okay, so. You, you, so set, you set a bit on it, so you're not allowed to bind this. Yeah, so I, I yeah, I, I'm going to like put a giant asterisk on the entire, this entire talk, which is that uh, bind, bind mounts, mounts evil. yeah, yeah, t yeah, TBD on bind mounts. Yeah, no, I, I agree. So yeah, again, so um, you could say the bind mount thing for basically every here thing here, which is that like if you can bind mount it, this stuff does not help. But the thing is that in 99.99% of like all containers everywhere, they can't bind mount it. That doesn't mean we shouldn't fix the problem. I'm just saying that like, uh, yeah, that it seems to me like yeah, if we just block, I mean, we, oh, we can't really block bind mounting. <laughs> okay, if it made it, if you're possible for you to say you can't bind, like if you had like mounts unbindable or whatever as a way of like on the open thing, I don't know. I would, I would need to think about it. This is like, yeah, I, I agree it's a problem. I would be happy to take suggestions on how to fix it. Um, I accept uh, patches to my tree. Uh, yeah. And then, yeah, this is, uh, actually, I don't have a thing on mounting. Um, uh, but this is, this is a very minor thing, which is, um, which I did try to block a time, a while ago, but unfortunately, uh, uh, Al, uh, you said this. Uh, you, you said that we would never remove this, um, which is that yeah. Basically, you can currently mount on top of symlinks. So if you if you have, uh, I think you can do it easily with the new mount API. But with the old mount API, you can do it if you have the right. If you do it through enough indirections through magic links. So if you have if you open an ono follow to a file to a to a symlink, you have a handle to the symlink. You then mount through proc self fd blah to that ono follow. You can mount on top of a symlink. Uh, and as long as it's a non-directory, it'll work as normal, um, and it's all great. The only problem is that if you do this on top of a magic link, uh, from a user space perspective, there is like literally nothing we can do to protect against this. Like you cannot because. Okay, so from the use case of containers. Actually, uh, actually, I suggest a much simpler solution for that. Don't allow to bind anything on uh, proc, uh, pid, whatever. Because other the because that's uh, 
we, we shouldn't be allowing any mounts in that area. By like by an unprivileged user, you mean? I by anyone. anyone. I mean, because so what happens? Any... What happens when Pro Protoss exits? Yeah, it's a, it's equivalent to overriding a system call. So, so, so you're saying like from the kernel perspective, just block mounting on top of Procosis or whatever? Well, yes, except, uh, not not, not Procosis. So we already have a way to uh, mark inode as uh, don't mount on that. Yeah. We, al we already do that for, uh, we already have that uh, mechanics. And uh, I would say that anything uh, that isn't persistent enough and uh, proc uh, 42 something, something, something definitely isn't. Okay. Uh, should just get that treatment by default. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'd be, I cannot tell you how happy I am to hear that. I, w I will write the patch like literally as I exit the room. Like, yes, the, I would love to have this. Yes, please, please, we need to stop. Because it's like, there are so many, there are, it, yeah, I, okay. I, I mean, I actually, I had, well, okay, I don't have time now, but I was gonna have time where I would spend like five minutes talking about how many awful things this enables. Sorry. Oh, uh, we'll accept that we have proc FS and FSD. Uh, you have to be able to mount that. Proc, sorry. Proc, proc, the NFSD FS. Proc FS NFSD is a separate file system that gets like, like NSFS. That's, that's fine, fine but uh, that's fine. that is persistent. We should just do it on, uh, do it for uh, proc uh, PID, uh, for, for subdirectories, for per, pro, pro, for per thread uh, subdirectories in uh, proc FS and anything under them. Yeah, but that's just mount, that's mounted by the kernel. Not by user space, is that right? No, doesn't matter. Uh, places like proxies uh, are obviously not going away. That's there is no magic there. No, no, but the but proc pit ns is 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 kernel mounted. It's not user space mounted because it's automatic. Like when you start a process, it has its own thing. Yeah, but yeah, no, I yeah, I again, I kind of yeah, because it's like if if you don't block this somehow. Uh, even with OpenAT2, magic links are, are unsafe still because you cannot be sure that the thing, so because Resolve no XDev blocks mount crossings, but with magic links, I want to cross, cross a mount point, but I don't want to be crossing a bind mount on top of it that I can't be aware of. And it's like, oh, I'll just check mount info. It's like, well, it turns out that you can have race conditions where yada yada. So yeah, so um, yeah, if we can block this entirely, I, I'm, I'm very happy to hear that it's something which, we, which, which you'd be happy to have a uh, patch to block this, yeah, because I think. And you could yeah. you you could bind mount bits of uh, proc on other bits of proc, and so it still looks like slash proc. Uh, it's the, the things we can handle that. So because so the so what we can do is you can have if I want to act on proc proc self or proc uh, proc self blah, I open the parent. So okay, I want to okay, I want to reopen a pid. Let's say oh no, I want to access proc self exe, for instance, which we do in run C. We reexec ourselves through proc self exe. So I want to access proc self exe. I open proc self with open at two with no xdev, no sim, right, not proc self, proc my pid. I open that with no xdev, no sim link, no magic link, no funny business. Um, there's no, that's not a thing, but whatever. You block all this stuff, and then you then open underneath that xe, and uh, in that case, if because it's a kernel API, I can check, I can check that the slash proc is the real slash proc because the inode number of slash proc is set in the kernel as part of the API. I can check that it's a real thing. So I'm definitely sure the root is right. I'm definitely sure that all the directories are right because I, I open at two guarantees that from me. And then I'm, I'm finally at blah. I know that nothing can over, once this is done, I know that nothing can over mount XE. I can then just exec, uh, exec VE at XE. And there's no, nothing that can mess with it. Because, you, because you, I, at every single step, I've checked that it is actually what I think it is. So, as far as I can tell, that is actually, and also we can, uh, with a clone tree, you can create a copy, a copy, a copy of proc, so there's no, there's also additionally no race conditions as well, but that's a different, that's a different discussion. But yeah, um, I think that that would protect against this thing. You're looking at me funny. But I was talking about. Oh, sorry, we don't have, sorry, we don't, I think we're out of time, sorry. <laughs> we can talk about the last time. Yeah. Later. Yeah, yeah, okay, thank you very much.